Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about what I learned about containers. My name is Graham Chukumobi. I just recently concluded my DevSecOps internship at Control Plane. So yeah, um, I took the opportunity to really delve deeper into Kubernetes, containers, and the Linux system, whilst also learning Golang and you know trying to automate everything on the cloud, <laughs> if possible. <laughs> Um, I'm a member of the Cloud Native Wheels and the GDG Cardiff. And when I'm not busy with technology, I'm either sleeping, taking long walks, or navigating my way into the world of DevOps. So yeah, it was all hands on deck for me. Um, after securing the role as a DevSecOps intern, this was because I had almost zero prior knowledge of containers and Linux, basically. <laughs> And I believe most of us at some point in our career had been at this point where, you know, you don't, you have no idea where to start from. And in majority of the time, having um, so too many resources could also be a problem because you wouldn't know which one to start from. But luckily, I had the luxury of experienced colleagues in the field who I could always run to for tips and ideas on how to get started. And one of them, you know, suggested I get comfortable with the Linux system because, you know, I've always been the pro Windows guys. Very easy to install your games and you're good. So, he, you know, advice, I get comfortable with the Linux system. Um, the, and, you know, from there, I can delve into containers and Kubernetes. And yeah, it was the best idea. So from research and personal discoveries, everything started piecing um, together and was, you know, making sense, which, obviously came to the stage of finally creating a container. So you could, you know, just create your container by running the Docker command with the name of whatever base image you want to use, or you could, you know, go the long way by creating, writing your own Docker file, running the build command to create a container image out of your Docker file, and then eventually the run command to build a container from your container image. And there are so many standard, standards out there, you know, for creating containers. It could be your um, personal standard, depending on what, whatever projects you're working on. It could be an internal standard set by the organization you're working for, or you could just be following the CIS benchmarks, Docker best practices, which are all available online. I like to call these the four stages of creating containers. And, you know, the first stage being the host, obviously. This is um, where you get to choose the, an OS that is optimized for running containers. And, you know, possibly, I will always recommend, have an added layer of security and monitoring tools. And oh, you should also test to make sure that the host is configured for running containers and um, software orchestrator, orchestr orchestrator software, sorry. Um, then the second stage being create, writing your Docker file. Docker files are basically um, just text documents that contain all the command line, all the command that you could call on the command line to assemble an image. And before we go for that, please, I'd like to say, do not try this at home. The um, following Docker um, files are just for demonstration purposes. You shouldn't use this on your personal project. So here we have a very simple Docker file with very simple Docker commands. The from um, command being a, a, an instruction to initialize a new build stage with the base image. The maintainer command, which basically sets the author of the Docker file. The work directory, which is used to set a working directory for all the subsequent Docker file instructions. And then you have the other commands like the add, add command for setting a URL as a parameter the run command for executing commands inside your Docker file, and then the CMD command, which um, adds parameters inside our Docker, inside the, um, the container, sorry. And then, just like programming languages, static files can also be linked. This is usually done to check for optimizations, possible errors, and you know, could also be used to make our codes cleaner and possibly smaller, um, create smaller Docker images. There are several softwares out there which could be used to lint, but for this demonstration, we'll be using the Hadoo lint, 
which is um, short for hack shell Docker file linter. And then when we try to lint our Docker file as it is, it throws these errors. The good thing about Hado lint is it gives you um, a summary of the error with a warning code, like in the first one as seen here, using the latest tag is prone to errors um, if the image will ever be updated. So we are not, um, it's not recommended to use the, the um, latest tag for your base image. And then armed with this error code, you could easily just go to the um, Hadolint documentation page and then search for the error code, click on it. Um, in this case, we, I searched for the DL4000 error code, which is simply telling us that the maintainer keyword has been deprecated. It shows you the possible error and um, a way to, um, a, an example to correct it. And then following this process, we make the corrections for every other possible errors that were thrown. So for the, for, for the Alpine base image, I used the um, 3.9.2 version and then made the worker directory an absolute path. And now when we linked the Docker file, we just have these two errors. So these errors are basically, these um, two errors now are basically recommendations, which we don't really need to be bothered about. For example, the first one, the DL3013, we want the container image to always be built with the latest version of Apache Airflow um, and with the features we need. And, and another nice feature of Hadolint is the ability to pass configurations. Like in the second error, Shellcheck is thinking that the pip install command of Airflow is an additional package. Is is a range, sorry, but in this case, it's just an additional package. So in this case, we can ignore this error and we can do this in three ways. You could either just state the ignore command with the error code while running the Hadolint command, or you could um, type in the um, ignore command just above the problematic line of code, or you could create your own .yaml file where you list out all the ignore co um, error codes you like the Hadolint to ignore when you're linting your file. And now, when we lint it, no error is thrown. Um, this takes us to the um, third stage of the container creation basically being the container image scanning. This refers to the process of analyzing the content and the build process of your container image in order to detect security issues. And this stage is very key for security implementation. So I've trimmed the Docker file just to have, you know, just um, something very simple that we need for the following demonstration. Like I said, do not use this for your personal projects. And we build, we run the docker build command, giving our um, container image a name and creating a, a container image out of our docker file. And yeah, it works. So do not do this, do not run the docker command. We basically have created a container now. We are meant to scan it first, but we just wanted to show you that um, it, it works. Doesn't necessarily mean um, we've gone through the whole security process. So now we'll, um, we'll try to scan our container and to make sure that our container is secure. And for this purpose, we'll be using the Aqua 3 v open, open source scanner, which is available online and very easy to install and use. And after installing, you could just run the 3 v command with the name of your container image. And the good thing about Aqua 3 v is when it scans your container image, it gives you and it, when it detects vulnerability in your container image, it gives you the name of whatever plugin or library or base image that the vulnerability was found in, the CVE um, type code where the vulnerability was um, reported. It gives you the severity, the installed version of whatever plugin library or image you have in your container image, and the fixed version where that vulnerability was either patched or fixed. So armed with this information, as you can see here, we have high um, vulnerabilities and two critical. We have eight highs and two criticals. Armed with this information, you could easily just go to the um, documentation um, page of whatever library or image it is, and then look for the version of that library that those patches and fixes were implemented. In this case, it was the 
Alpine 3.15.0. And now when we try lengthening, um, scanning our container image again, um, no variabilities were found. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that your container is 100% secure. It just means that as of when this, was, this image was scanned, was scanned no, um, no variabilities or bad practices has been reported yet. Because the way AquaTreeView works is when it's scanning your container image, it's checking the CVE um, data, database to check if for um, the libraries, plugins, or images you're using in your container image, if any bad practice or vulnerability has been reported. So sh showing that no vulnerability was detected simply means that nothing has been reported yet. It doesn't mean that it's 100% secure. So this is why you have to continually, you know, at intervals, scan your, con scan your container images to always get the latest results um, of vulnerabilities. And um, when, when we ran the um, created the container by running the um, docker run command, initially we only had the text displaying, so I decided to make it a bit more fun by having the bash script running in our container, basically. So the bash script is just running the top command and in, um, take note of the um, PID one. This is the process which Docker uses to determine when it should exit. When the PID one exits, the, the entire container exits, and whenever you create a container and run it, the first thing that is run is the PID one, which as soon as it exits, the entire container exits. So now the final stage of container creation being the container security, continuation of the container security and communication. This is just ensuring that um, all your container is running as, inten as intended and making sure that you know, in, um, infrastructure, um, supply chain, and runtime, and everything in between is also running as it intended. When you create your container, it's obviously going to have to communicate with other containers and resources. So the internal traffic should be monitored at, and secured and ensuring all traffic from your container passes through an intrusion prevention system. So um, here, instead of like implementing a small number of very, very large IP, IPS systems, it's always better to implement an IPS on every host, which allows for traffic to be you know, effectively monitored. Um, yeah, milestones so far. So during my journey into containers and Kubernetes and Linux, I have earned the Linux Foundation Containers Fundamentals badge, which was awesome after then, the Essential of Linux System Administration Certification, and I've been able to um, complete the control plane uh, material, tutorial for containers, and also completed the Linux 20-day ops, upskill challenge on Reddit, and right now gearing up for my CKA exam. Hopefully, pass it up one sitting, and yeah. That's it for me. Thank you. Please feel free to ask any questions outside. Thank you. <laughs>